Hello, ladies and gentlemen. In this video, I'm going to be doing a final group preview on Group G with Brazil, Serbia, Switzerland, and Cameroon. This group is already a bit of a deja vu. We saw a lot of these teams face each other. It's a very similar group to the previous World Cup in Russia. The only difference was that Cameroon is now replacing Costa Rica. And people are saying this might be one of the deadliest World Cup groups because, yeah, there's a World Cup favorite in there, Brazil. But also, you can't rule out these other sides. Serbia have been looking a lot better recently. Switzerland have been having fantastic history in major tournaments. And Cameroon have so much talent we shouldn't write off. Although we've already seen a similar group in 2018, I'm very excited to see a lot of these teams have rematches against one another. Because a lot's changed within four years. Now, just like the other group previews we did on this channel, we brought on a special guest. I'm joined again with Tactical Manager TV here. He mostly covers the U.S. national team on his channel, but he is Brazilian. He's also an expert on this national team as well. He's going to be doing a lot more content on the other national teams in this World Cup. In fact, he's doing a stream soon about the Brazil national team roster. Make sure you go subscribe to him. I'll leave a link to his channel in the description below. Now, like I already mentioned, many people are expecting Brazil to fly high at this World Cup. But since I had a massive discussion with Filippo about the Brazil national team I'll save that bit for later on and dive into these other teams first if you're not new around here you know I've been praising Serbia a bit so let's start bottom up talk about Cameroon now I feel like a lot of people are underestimating this side due to the difficult group they've been placed in but they haven't been helping their case in the last international break they lost to Uzbekistan 2-0 and South Korea 1-0 however despite this national team randomly looking shaky something you gotta admire about them is they're always willing to fight to the end in every competition. In the World Cup qualifiers, their last match was against Algeria. They had to play them head-to-head -head over two legs. Algeria beat them 1-0 in the first leg, but the second one, Cameroon scored a last-minute goal in the 124th minute off of a set piece. I know it was very controversial for many Algerian fans, but Cameroon qualified at the end of the day. All came down to the man Carl Toko Ekambi, who has been very clutch for the national team recently. Him and Vincent Abubakar can have a very interesting partnership at this World Cup. We already saw it earlier this year in the Africa Cup of Nations. Cameroon finished third place in that tournament. Yes, they did have some questionable matches, like beating Comoros barely when they didn't even have a proper goalkeeper in between the sticks. But they still had solid displays, lost to Egypt on penalties in the semifinals, which brought them to that third place match against Burkina Faso, where at halftime they were down 3-0. And what did Cameroon do? fight to the end. They scored three late goals which brought them to penalties and they won the match. It's really a national team full of warriors, you can't deny that. And they got some talent there of course, Zambo and Goisa, one of their biggest names in the midfield. Obviously so many people have been talking about Napoli recently and he has been one of those contributors. Very skillful player that sometimes doesn't 100% impress for the national team, but who knows? He can turn things around in Qatar. We can see their goalkeeper Onana come in absolutely clutch. He's had a pretty big absence from football, but has been proven his worth once again at Inter Milan. The reason why I'm doubting them is because even when they get the results, they cut it so close too many times. I don't know if it's going to pay off against these massive teams. They are one of the few African countries to have a solid run at the World Cup going as far as the quarterfinals. No Africa team has made it further than that. That was in 1990. I believe that was the first time an Africa country made it that far in the first place. Apart from that, every other time they have qualified, it has been group stage eliminations for them. Now let's move on to Switzerland. I think this side has proven to be one that no side wants to come up against these days. Their recent history involves with them making it all the way to the quarterfinals in Euro 2020, where in the round of 16s they came up against favorites France, and in the quarterfinals they had to face Spain and lost on penalties. In the last World Cup, with this very similar group, they were able to get second place, where they even went on to draw with Brazil. That brought them to the round of 16s, and they lost to Sweden 1-0. In these World Cup qualifiers, they topped Italy in their group which brought italy to those playoffs and we all know what happened there they've really had a remarkable impact so i would not be surprised if they make it out of this group once again switzerland overall has some very underrated players but their back line they really are a dedicated bunch you've got ricardo rodriguez who already has 100 caps for the national team fabian shaw at newcastle who's been part of that squad where at the moment they sit at fourth 
in the Premier League table. More solid center backs like Akanji and Alvedi. When it comes to their midfield, you've got the likes of Granite Jaka, who has been absolutely abused by Arsenal fans in the past, and now they all love him. He has had an exceptional season so far, and he has always been reliable for the national team. A proper captain for Switzerland, along with Vice Captain Shakiri, where they both whooped up those Albania celebrations against Serbia in 2018. They were the two biggest players in that match because they just seemed absolutely fueled and determined to beat this side. Shakiri, one of the most capped players for the national team, he's had some heroic moments for them, scored some amazing goals. They have a reliable attack force as well. Safedovic with 25 goals for the national team, currently playing for Galatasaray. Mbolo so many times steps up at big moments for the national team. One of their young players, Okafor, who currently plays at Salzburg. So many players from Salzburg to talk about, but this guy is one of the key men. Jan Sommer was a massive talking point in that Euro campaign, and he has been in exceptional form. However, he did pick up a recent injury where it is questioned if he'll be playing at the World Cup. That would be a huge loss for them, although Switzerland have some solid backups. But to me, he's been one of their biggest players. It will be a lot for any other keeper, no matter how solid they are, to fulfill that role. Switzerland recently appointed a new manager, Jakin, who came towards the end of the World Cup qualifier run, where he obviously finished the job well against Italy, but then had a shaky start to the Nations League. That was the only time I properly doubted them. They were 0-3, but then they beat every single team that beat them, including Spain and Portugal. They finished third, but look how close that point gap was. The furthest Switzerland have ever made it in the World Cup was the quarterfinals, but that was all the way back in 1954 and 1938. Since then, in recent times, it's always either group stage or round of 16s. So they have some solid history making it to the knockouts at this tournament, while Serbia unfortunately does not. Since becoming an independent nation, Serbia has never made it past the group stage at this tournament. The only times they qualified as an independent nation, though, were in 2010 and 2018. In 2010, we can't forget they had a decent display against Germany, but they still got knocked out early on. In 2018, the only win they were able to obtain was against Costa Rica off of a color of free kick. They lost to Brazil 2-0, and yeah, I already mentioned earlier, they lost to Switzerland 2-1 to a very determined Balkan descent duo. Serbia still had a lot of quality back then, but they were a bit more of a mess. Earlier, they had Muslin in charge, but there was a lot of dispute going on whether he should be sacked or not due to the fact that he didn't have the best relationship with some of their star players players, especially Milenkovic Savage. It sparked a lot of controversy, which yeah, it did end up getting him sacked, so Krstajic ended up taking charge. It was a hopeful switch, obviously, now that they had Milenkovic Savage in the World Cup squad, but obviously it wasn't enough. Where well, they got knocked out of the group stage, yes, but this time though, things are different. Not only does Serbia possess even more talent, they also have a fantastic manager who's been proving his worth recently, Dragan Stojkovic, otherwise known as Pixie the legend of the Yugoslavia national team. Thanks to his organization, a lot of top talent blooming. They topped their World Cup qualifier group over Portugal on the final match day, which had them automatically qualifying for this tournament. They also recently topped their Nations League group in, in my opinion, the toughest group in League B with Norway, Slovenia, and Sweden. They have an exceptional attacking force at the moment. Alexander Mitrovic with 50 goals for the national team in 76 appearances. Last season in the championship, he broke the top goal scorer record very early on throughout the season. He finished off with 43 goals and seven assists. Lots of people doubted that he could still pull through in the Premier League, but he's still doing the job for the same club. Nine goals so far in 11 appearances. Dusan Vlahovic really caught everyone's eye while he was at Fiorentina. He equaled Ronaldo's goal scoring record in a single calendar year in the Serie A. And then he moved to Juventus where he's still showing to be a very clutch player, but not as explosive per se, but I think that's mainly due to Allegri's tactics. If one of them's injured, they still got Luka Jovic, who obviously didn't blossom as people expected him to after his terrific season at Frankfurt, but he is still very much a quality backup option. Dusan Tadic throughout recent years has been an absolute machine. There's some controversy about this claim, but Ajax did say that he beat Messi's assist record in a single calendar year. A lot of fans went on to say that that claim was not true because they counted a lot of friendlies while they didn't count any friendlies for Messi. But still, regardless of the fact that he was close in the first place, is incredible. He's always racking up the numbers. Last season in the Dutch league, he got 19 assists and 13 goals in 34 appearances. Another key midfielder, Filip Kostic. He pulled off some fantastic numbers in the Bundesliga throughout his time at Frankfurt. 
He was a key contributor to their Europa League success last year. And Milinkovic Savic is literally a diamond for Lazio. I mean, I already told you that story of how they replaced our manager in the last World Cup due to him. There's a reason behind it. His talent is unmatched and every season he proves his worth. The only thing that somewhat concerned me about Serbia throughout these recent years, I feel like they haven't been excelling compared to their midfield and attack is their defense. Sometimes they do concede some silly goals, but the likes of Pavlovic has really stepped up his game. I've been hyping up this side a lot throughout this year, but I think they deserve all of it. I mean, they really are looking a lot better. Maybe they will crash at this World Cup. They have, don't have good history against Brazil or Serbia, obviously, but I think this is their opportunity for revenge, especially against Switzerland. Switzerland have been some European giants themselves, but so have Serbia. Just like Switzerland, they've beaten Portugal recently in a more important match, to be fair. History is against them, but they just can't look in the past. They gotta look towards the future. They're on an upward trend at the moment. And now for Brazil, the perfect opportunity to bring on Filippo. Filippo, thanks for joining once again. Last time we touched on Group B. Today we're going to Group G. Obviously, you are an expert on the Brazilian national team as well. And I believe you are backing them to win the World Cup, correct? I am. A little bit as a fan and a little bit just as an analyst as well. Obviously, there's so much to talk about in terms of strengths. What are they for you? There's plenty of strengths in this team, right? When we talk about it. Just to make it clear, I'm backing them to win the World Cup, but we will address in the video, there's a lot of issues to talk about as well, Brazil. But in terms of strength, I want to compare it to previous World Cups, right? But let's go to 2018, where Brazil was also a candidate to win it. We didn't have in 2018 as much depth as this roster. It, it's not close. The main reason we lost to Belgium, in my opinion, was the absence of Casemiro. And having Fernandinho, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, Fernandinho scored an own goal that game against Belgium. Yeah, along with the just the massive hole he left in the midfield for Kevin De Bruyne's first goal, alongside with Marcelo being a problem too, in my opinion. But when you look at this team, let's say we lose Casemiro. You put Fabinho in right now. Is that a major drop-off? I don't know if that's even a drop-off, right? It might not even be a drop-off. It might be the exact same. Now, up top is another thing as well. Last World Cup, we played with Neymar on the left, Gabriel Jesus up top, and William on the right. And then the backups were Douglas Costa that got injured. Then you had Tyson and Bobby Firmino. Now, look at this World Cup, the options we have. Vinicius Jr. emerged as one of the best players in the world. Rafinha in Barcelona, struggling a little bit, but still a fantastic player. Anthony from Man United. Gabriel Jesus, a better player than he was in 2018. Richarlison he just confirmed his injury is not that severe. He will be good for the World Cup. Another fantastic player. Bobby Firmino is in form. Rodrigo. The options are so much bigger. And I do want to give a shout out to one player that many Brazilians will talk about. That's a fantastic center forward that no one's going to be talking about internationally. And that's Pedro from Flamengo. He is a different type of center forward from all these ones that I mentioned. Not as mobile, but just a pure goal scorer. To me, the best forward Flamengo has, not the best player, that would be a Hascaeta. But this team has so much depth, right, compared to Pat. And goalkeeper, we have two world-class goalkeeper options. And then the third goalkeeper is Weverton from Palmeiras. That's also fantastic. Center backs. Last World Cup, if I'm not mistaken, we started Thiago Silva with Miranda. I was never a big fan of Miranda. Very slow defender. Good, but not that great. This World Cup, we're going with Thiago Silva and Marquinhos. Along with that, look at the players you have as backups. You have Gabriel Magalhães from Arsenal. You have Militão that might play as a right back, but can play as a center back. You have Bremer from Juventus. The depth of this team is fantastic. And we have that. Along with Chichi having already a World Cup on his baggage as experience, our coach, that I hope he learned some of the lessons and we can you know, perform better. But then now we're going to get to probably the issues, right? And probably people yeah. know what I said. Yep. I was going to ask the weaknesses. I know you mentioned fullbacks. Fullbacks is definitely a concern, right? So the right back position, we don't really have any reliable right back. So Chichi has tried in the last camp in September. He played Militão as the right back. And that's probably who we're going to go with on the right back. Is he fine on the right back? Yeah, he'll do fine. But he's a center back, right? He was a right back in the past. He can play there, but that's not his ideal position. And then the backup of Militão, it can be Danilo from Juventus. The rumors are strong that Dani Alves might be the backup. 
And Dani Alves has been playing in Liga MX in Mexico and not doing well and playing as a midfielder. And then when you go to the left back, you have Alexandro, Alex Teles, Rena Lodi. None of them are a disaster by any means, but it just feels like when you compare to the other players in this team, the center backs, midfielders and forwards, there's a massive drop off when it comes to the fullbacks. But we've seen also um, teams win World Cups in the past with some sketchy players here and there, right? That that yep. happens. Yep, of course. Not every position can be fulfilled. And still, Brazil have loads of depth, as you've mentioned. But going back to that, shifting to the attack, though, what would be your ideal front three or attacking force with all that amazing depth Brazil have? I feel like it's tough to choose. What would your ideal front three, for example, be? So I'm going to side with Chichi a little bit here. The way I would play, and this is not how he will play 100%, I would put Vinicius Jr. on the left, then I would put Gabriel Jesus up top, and on the right, I would put probably Rafinha right now, but if his form is very bad, I would consider maybe Rodrigo or Anthony. When you're probably looking at me weird right now saying, where the heck is Neymar? He's going to be a 10 for us. He's going to play as an attacking yeah. midfielder. I would, and, and that's where I side with Chichi. I think Neymar's playmaking ability is one of the most underrated aspects of his game. The line breaking passes he can make, how he can completely disrupt the de defender playing central as a 10. So it's not a front three, answer your question. It's a front four. Going back to Chichi, what are your honest thoughts about him? Because I'm hearing like, so many mixed things. Even you went kind of back and forth siding with him and whatnot. I'm definitely not a big fan. And if you go back to his Corinthians days, he was what we call in Brazil a retranqueiro, which a retranqueiro just means a guy that just bunkers, parks the bus, plays a low block and defends. And I think Chelsea fans might have a memory of that because he coached Corinthians when they beat Chelsea parking the bus <laughs> on the FIFA Club World Cup that Chelsea lost. So is he a good coach? Yes, he's a good coach. Does he play that way with Brazil? No, Brazil doesn't park the bus. We attack. There is days where he puts our team in a way that we look very pragmatic and way too structured. That's not how Brazil is supposed to play. We're supposed to play the joga bonito, fluid, let our players be creative. And Chichi seems to really enjoy positional play. For example, I think that's one of the reasons why we struggled against Argentina in the past three games. We haven't scored against Argentina the past three games. And I think it's a little bit about the way Chichi wants this team to play. Now, to his defense, after we lost to Argentina in the Copa America in 2021, I have seen a team with a little bit more freedom to create, players roaming a bit more. It looks a little bit different. So maybe he's learned and Chichi is willing to change. He's willing to try different things, right? Like the Militão on the right back. I've never heard of a Brazilian coach that hasn't gotten fired after a bad World Cup, right? Losing the quarterfinals is a bad World Cup, but he stayed. It's his second World Cup. I'm not a big fan, but I'll give him the benefit of the doubt for 28, 2022. By that, I don't mean like win it, right? Because you can go to the final and lose to an amazing team. That can happen. But it has to be better than 20, 2018. He has a better team. He has experience. He knows what to do. So I'll give him the benefit of the doubt for this World Cup. And then after that, you can ask me again. Even with these potential flaws still, Brazil are such favorites for so many people. And even with this group that they're in, this is a really tough group. Serbia, mm -hmm. Switzerland, Cameroon, these are all not teams to mess about with. Which of those teams are you most worried to come up against right now the team that worries me the most i would say switzerland because they're just always a problem to play with but it's not switzerland and it's not cameroon either i think serbia worries me a bit more they had some young players in the past world cup they were more of a 2022 team and right now i think their time has arrived and to me they're one of the dark horses of this world cup vlahovic is a world-class center forward and mitrovic after killing it in the efl championship he brought the same form to the Premier League. And they have size, which could be a problem for Brazil, even though Brazil has some big players, right? Uh, Brazil has that, surprisingly, and reliable goalkeepers. I can see them being a problem. And Serbia sort of switched to playing a front two with Vlahovic and Mitrovic, if mm -hmm. I'm not mistaken, recently. I can see that becoming a problem. That would be the team that would worry me the most in this group. But like you said, this is a very tough group, a very tough group. And and I mean, do I have Brazil getting knocked down in the group stage? I don't think anyone does, but something could happen. They could go in second. It's not too crazy to say that. I still have them in first. I think Brazil is going to get seven to nine points. But to answer your question, Serbia, and I am worried about this team. 
In terms of the actual group standings, and already you already hinted that Brazil will probably get nine or seven points, but what are your standing predictions at this current time? I think it's going to be Brazil, Serbia getting their revenge against Switzerland, Switzerland in third place, but causing trouble to everyone, and then Cameroon in fourth place. And I'm, I apologize to any of the Cameroon viewers. I just think that on paper, their national team is a level below Switzerland and Serbia and two or three levels below Brazil. I do want to add one thing for context for everyone that everyone should take into consideration when saying Brazil are the favorites. I think for any South American nation, the more South American teams you face in the World Cup, the worse, right? And Brazil felt that impact in 2014. There's no excuses for the 7-1 loss to Germany, but we had come out of two battles before that game. One of them that Neymar almost like retired, right? He almost broke his back. Thiago Silva suspended. The players were fatigued. We had a battle against Chile and a battle against Colombia. Is that an excuse for the 7-1? Absolutely not. There's no excuse for that. And I still think we would have lost to Germany regardless, but a closer score, right? 2-0, 3-1, whatever. The problem is Brazil's group crosses with Uruguay's group. So one of my concerns is us advancing in first or even second and Uruguay advancing on the opposite, right? First or second and us having to face Uruguay in the round of 16. Do I think Uruguay can knock out Brazil? Uh, any Brazilian will say, say the same thing. Playing Uruguay is hell, man. It's horrible to play against them. They will beat you up. They don't go down easily. They have quality. So if Brazil plays Uruguay in the round of 16, I could see injuries, potential red cards happening. And then my concern is Brazil playing Spain or Germany in the quarterfinals without everyone. That's where the depth is going to have to come in, right? Yeah. Uh, but there is that concern. I think many Brazilians will agree with me. I'd much rather play Portugal in the round of 16 or Ghana or South Korea. I don't want to face Uruguay. Not because I'm afraid of getting knocked out by them, but just like the baggage you carry on after facing a South American nation. And I think that can also hurt Brazil or Argentina because they're likely to face each other in the semifinals. And that will be a freaking war when they face each other. Mm -hmm. It'll be a battle. That is my only concern is the South Americans dropping on one bracket, one side of the bracket. So that's just something to add for context because we all believe, most of us believe that Comebol will finally take the World Cup back. But Comebol's worst enemy in this World Cup might be Comebol. <laughs> just keep that yeah. in mind. Once again, thank you to Tactical Manager TV for joining me in this video. Go subscribe to him if you haven't already. An interesting fact that he even brought up in one of his other videos and to me as well. Brazil has never won a World Cup without a Palmeiras player in their squad. And they got one this year. Filippo mentioned him earlier, Weberton, their third string goalkeeper. So if you're superstitious and you're Brazilian, there you go. More hope for you guys. But in terms of my group predictions, I'm going to have to agree with Filippo. Although I really would like to see Serbia top this group. And who knows, maybe they can pull a shocking result against Brazil on that first match day. I unfortunately don't see it happening. Maybe a draw at max. Maybe they'll give Brazil some concerns and a wake-up call. But apart from that, I do see Brazil still topping this group with probably 7 points. That matchup I talked about, Serbia versus Switzerland, will be played on the final match day. And I think it's one of the last matches in the group stage as well. And I really think it's between either of those two teams. I am going to favor Serbia, but I will not be surprised if I'm wrong and Switzerland do it. History is backing them up, but I think Serbia have what it takes to break that history, get revenge against them. We shall see, though. But let me know which group you want to see me do next for these group previews. Still have a lot to cover, so make sure you stay tuned. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Like this video. We're so close to 50,000 subscribers, so really would appreciate if you help me out. But yeah, thank you guys for making it all the way to the end. I will see you all. Very, very soon. Take care. Lock on